Stuart Skinner is such a pussy. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Hockey Gaily Podcast. My name is Talon Jenkins. Joined by our hosts, we got Ryan Gilbert and Joel Meyer. Gentlemen, how the hell are we doing tonight? We're back, boys. We're back. 4-1 win at MSG. Flyers are alive. They're coming home. There's two more home games. They mean something. At least Saturdays does. That's, that's all. That's all I want. Just meaningful hockey. So uh, I, I'm happy here. I am happy as well. We're relieved is more the term. You know, my biggest bet on the Masters was John Rom, low Spaniard, and that was a war today. Um, Sergio Garcia was was doing okay. He wasn't he wasn't spiraling out of control uh, yet, and then and John Rom was was kind of like leaking oil the whole day, and then uh, there were a couple. Uh, so, Oh, did oh, Jolie freeze? Couple, oh, Jolie. Really? Okay. Okay. Two oh, he's back. He's back. Okay. You froze a little bit there, Joel. Okay. Well, yeah. point is, it was a sweat falling John Rom today. And I got to dodge Pablo Arizabala, whatever the fuck his name is. He's not very <laughs> good. But, you know, it, 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 it's never easy in golf. Um. So, yeah, that that's that's my – that's okay, here's the thing. Like, sure, a nice sweat is when you're, like, you're about to sweat, like, uh, you, you got a guy in the back – back nine you got my like I don't know, 40 to one or something that's fine but you weren't expecting to really hit it at the, when you made the bet at the beginning of the tournament but when you lay a minus 350 and you put a ton of money on it you're sweating it the whole fucking time <laughs> like that, that's the true entertainment if you want the real thrill real degen thrill you just uh, you put a lot of money on a single bet and uh just just yeah every fucking hole is is live and die by it so yeah glad that we're 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 doing okay, and, and actually the matchups are going better than I thought. So uh, thank you, uh, Jordan Spieth, and uh, oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Max Homa. He's keep keeping uh, Morikawa away. Morikawa looked dead, but he's mm-hmm. coming back. But thankfully, Homa is uh, well in front for now. So yeah, hell of a hell of a tournament so far as this town will fill you in on. Oh my God, man! These past two days have been fucking nothing short of absolutely electric, bro. I was telling Joel, I like I woke up. When was it was supposed to start at eight o'clock yesterday, right? On Thursday, obviously there's a weather delay. I was like, whatever, I'm just gonna like look at some early bird coverage and all this crap. So I just sat there just listening to James Duffy talk for like an hour and I'm like, yeah, I can't do this anymore. So I put on the the Sky Sports golf stream and just listened to I think that Nick Faldo on there. I'm like, all right, I can listen to my boy Nick. So broke that down and shit. That was all fine and dandy. And then and then the round started, bro. And oh my god, it's been absolutely electric. My my day one round one matchups. I was killing it, bro. It was 4-1-1. You no, know, everything was pretty much coming through roses for me. I was looking great. Day two matchups. I went three and three. That's fine, you know. I think uh, I think I was down maybe like half a unit or some shit on that. Nothing too crazy. So we can bounce back from that. But today was fucking crazy. This is day two of the Masters with that weather. I was telling Joel before we started recording, we were talking a little bit here, with the amount of wind speed that was happening and then just the difference of the course between Friday and Thursday, it's night and day, man. Just because of how dry it was today, we are seeing the real Augusta. Those greens are absolutely insane, man. Those greens were a menace to society, for Christ's sakes. You look at guys, they're barely tapping the ball. These balls are moving like 30 feet off, like nothing put it. It's like, uh. It's like Ryan trying to like punch somebody, being in, be in a fight, just, uh. And the ball just goes like 40 feet across the green. It's absolutely insane. It was crazy. Today was like today was a Royal Rumble. It was a survival of the fittest. And you're not playing against anybody else. You're playing against yourself. And you're just trying not to throw yourself over the top rope. There are so many guys that should still be in right now that are not. And it's been absolutely fucking nuts, dude. The the final, the final like maybe like hour of the coverage when JT bogeyed for, or double bogeyed 18 and the entire cut line moved to six over. I was screaming. I was running around my apartment like, holy shit, this guy's in. This guy's in. Still alive on this bet still going here still going here the masters is fucking awesome dude it's the best goddamn weekend of the year i know we're not a golf podcast but like holy shit dude this is awesome tommy kim still alive phil mickelson's gonna win me a shitload of cash Corey connors is gonna have a bounce back day tomorrow he's gonna be lights out here there's gonna be so much stuff going on my, my boy bryson came through for me fucking I mean, Max Homa today is like round two leader, and like it was looking, he finished at like six under, and like Bryson and Bryson was like halfway through his round, he was a seven under. Scheffler was still there, but because of the weather, they all tied. So at least I got like 150 bucks off my fifty dollar bet. Should have been more. I bet him before they started the round at like plus eleven hundred, but whatever, I'll take any profit I can get at this time. That's fine. Fucking 
I'm going crazy, man. I'm going crazy. Like, I'm flabbergasted. This is all fired up. I had two hours of sleep. I watched it all day yesterday. I went to bed at like 5 a.m. I was playing golf on my Xbox. I got the fucking game and shit. I was just dialing it in, playing it. Went to bed at 5. Set my alarm. Woke up at 7.30 to start the next coverage. I uh, No sleep. I'm going nuts. I'm wearing my Blue Jay jersey because I'm like, fuck, I'm rattled up. I'm fired up. I need something boring in my life to just <laughs> down. So that's what's going on. Oh, boys, I'm sorry. This is the best. Like this is the best. It's so sick. Where can people go if they need a golf gambling podcast? Uh, talent? You know what? There is a place you go to the golf gambling podcast. You know, with the sports gambling podcast network. You know, the golf gambling podcast kicks ass. Those guys are doing awesome. Uh, their preview shows are the Masters is sweet. I'm sure they're doing updates. I'm sure they'll do a post round update as well. Uh, also, they're giving away a tailor made spider tour putter which is absolutely sick. Those things are like 600 bucks and they're electric. We've all been in the golf stores. They got the little green set up. You grab it. It's one of the most expensive parties you have. You roll a couple putts with it and you're like, this thing is unbelievable. And then you look at the price tag and you're like, shit, I don't really want to pull the trigger. So, but you don't have to, you go, you can sign up for their contest, you know, go listen to the show. They get more details about it, man. And, uh, hell yeah dude you can win that because it's absolutely sweet. And those are sick putters. So shout out the golf gambling podcast. Hell yeah. Ryan, how are your bets going for the masters? You still alive? Uh, I mean, I, I have Scheffler at, at a five to one or so with, with a boost. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm always alive. If you, if you, if you have Scotty, uh, I think there's a few guys towards the top that I'm still alive on. I was talking to you guys before though. Hideki, he's screwing me as as the top agent. He's uh, he still has a chance. He still come back, but yeah, not too great there. But speaking of things, make sure you subscribe to the Hockey Game Podcast and leave us a five star rating and review. We got a got a new one for the end of the show, so uh, it's a good one great. this time. So make sure can't wait to hear that. that. <laughs> yeah they're always so friendly to tell them i know everyone's so mean to me all the time you guys suck uh i mean did you heard the thing you got nothing nice to say don't say anything jeepers um all right we're gonna go through our locked dogs and totals from last show i don't even remember when i guess this was for yesterday's game so for the games for april 11th uh rough outing for all of us essentially Julie went uh one and two down 0. 0.65 units uh, Ryan went 0 2 and 1 with a push down three units. I went 0 4, 0 and 3 down four units. This could have got ugly. Uh, Jolie, why don't you go first here, buddy? Yeah, yeah. My lock. Um, Talent said I got lucky with this one. Penguins against the Red Wings. Penguins were like yeah, in, in the lead the whole game. Sure, we got some help from Alex Lyon, who had a terrible game uh, for once. Uh, so that, that worked out. But here's the thing like, I've, I've, I've whined about this before. Uh, with the fucking Red Wings, I know if they, they fucked over a lock, like they scored with the empty netter to tie, and then they, they won an overtime against the Blackhawks. Did the same fucking thing to the Avalanche. Uh, one of those games is that that Patrick, that Patrick. Oh yeah, it was against Chicago, of course, his old team there. Um, but I thought they were going to do the same thing again. The Penguins are up five to three. Red Wings, uh, they they score two late goals, five five. I'm like, oh, here we go again. But thank fuck. For Eric Carlson, you know I always love this guy. Uh, Sydney, yeah, okay. <laughs> Sydney Cross made, made a hell of a play. I think he got his thousandth point on he this uh, on this play. Um, so yeah, hell, hell of a pass there, hell of a play. I think they they devised this this that he purposely got himself kicked out of the face off and and then he was able to intercept the pass. I'm not sure how that worked. I didn't catch it. I just heard somebody explaining it after. But uh, yeah, he, they worked out. Um, Eric Carlson, how it's a slap shot, beat Alex line, clean. Um, beauty, beauty win there. Needed this one because, uh, yeah, the dog, not so good. Maybe Rangers minus one and a half. Uh, Ryan mentioned it earlier, 4 1 win for the Flyers. Uh, bad bet here. Uh, Rangers need to get going, you know, two two straight losses. And if they want to win the one seed, they got to watch out for the Bruins. Um, we'll talk about that a little later. And finally, the total. What did I say? What did I say? I, I had an intuition. An instinct that we'd see Matt Tompkins in this game, and we sure did. However, it did not help my total because <laughs> 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 Matt Tompkins was actually really good in this one. And the Lightning power play went 0 for 4. We never see that. So uh, it was a 2 2 tie. Senators were the better team, though. So at least I got the Sens my line with a big price there. Um, yeah, not 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 because of uh, Matt Tompkins, though. The Sens were actually the better team in this one. So yeah, the over 6.5, minus 115. That loss, I would still make the bet again because you're getting Matt Tompkins instead of Vasilevsky. So, yeah, that, that's that's just a bit of bad luck there. But yeah, happy with the Pens win. Yeah, for me, my lock was the Stars minus 148, which was apparently not a consensus play because Talon was on the Jets. Uh, they got shut out by Larry Bassois. Three nothing shut out there for the Jets. So, lost that one. My dog Canadians plus 170 on Long Island. There, they were up one nothing. 
They're up 2-1. They were getting outshot all game. Got outshot 31-14, lost in overtime. And my total uh, was a push. Capitals, Sabres, under 6, minus 120. 4-2 final, but it was 3-1 late in the third. Sabres got an empty net goal, and then Tom Wilson scored for the Capitals to make it 4-2. It's greasy. Um, so, yeah, just a, just a push there. Uh, so only minus 3 instead of minus 4. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went over. It sucks. I was talking to these guys before the show. I think I got shafted, dude. Like I, I was sitting there. It was like the third period of all these games. I'm like, I'm either going to win every one of these or I'm going to lose every one of these. <laughs> and sure enough, I lost every one. Uh, my lock had the Leafs in regulation versus New Jersey, minus 130. This game was nuts, dude. I didn't even start watching until after the first period. I was waiting for the Masters coverage to end up or to finish or whatever. Then I tuned this on and it was 3-2 Devils. I'm like, what the? fuck is happening uh leafs go up though Leafs start out they, they were humming in the second period they came out banging matthews gets two goals so he's up to number what that's that 68 on the season now that's pretty sweet everybody's buzzy we're buzzing domi beat the fucking wheels off uh yeah. who, who did he beat who was that little d- defenseman young kid mm. what's his name oh it was um nemic yeah, Nemec. Yeah, yeah. Beat the wheels off him. That was sweet. Did you hear what he said today? He's like, Yeah, I didn't even know who he was. Some player, and I just saw him mess with Matthew, so I just went and took care of it. Like, that's awesome, dude. Um, but yeah, that was bad. Samsonov looked like bag of shit in there. He did not have a good game. But he's, you know, you give him the benefit of the doubt. He's been absolutely unreal lately. I've heard people, you know, you got the typical Twitter losers, the Leaf fans, like, oh, see, we got a problem in Nets. Like, the guy's been absolutely lights out for the past like three months, and you're just gonna shit on him on one game, but. Whatever, that's fine. So that lost uh, for my dog, Tampa Bay, minus one and a half, plus 120 versus Ottawa. It was like 2-1 bolts, something like, what, like 10 minutes after the third. I'm like, okay, just get one more or at least force like a possible empty net, you know. I'm sure that they could have wrangled that, but no, Ottawa tied it. I think Ottawa won in a shootout. I watched it. I hate Claude Giroux. Anybody that goes up and does your little, like, I'm sorry, Ryan, but anybody that does your little stupid, I'm going to skate in and do a slap shot, or I'm going to skate in and then fake a slap shot and then miss the net in a shootout, like, I, maybe it's just the goalie in me coming out. It's like, you're a fucking loser, bro. Like, that's just stupid. But, but he scores on that on that slap shot a lot of the time. I'm sure, but you're still dumb, bro. Like, that's, I don't know. I, I, I just hate it. That's the goalie in me coming out. Maybe some people like it, but um and then for my total uh rangers flyers over six minus 110 i did not watch this game it was like a 4-1 final or something like that was praying for a push so gilbert and i could have both been in a similar scenario here that's greasy but uh it did not come uh ryan i'm sure you watched this game i'm sure you could have told a little bit more about what happened but uh sam urson decided that hey i'm not gonna have a yeah. fucking seven eight six save percentage this game and i'm actually gonna make some saves but you called this on twitter before like the day before the game didn't you you're like yeah yeah, Flyers are going to beat the Rangers or some shit like that. Yeah, it's just it's just the most Flyers thing to like get fucking killed by the Canadians nine three and then show up against a better team. Mm-hmm. So yeah, part for the course. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, I went zero for four, which means I got to do ads, and this sucks because I was actually doing so good lately, but not anymore. Anyways, uh, if you're not doing good and you want to do good, you can do good with our friends at Underdog Fantasy. We are proud to be brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Uh, Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play uh, fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Um, yeah, so what, what do we got? There's tons of stuff you can do, man. We got, you can pick whatever your favorite player will have a higher or lower stat total in this week's game for a big chance to win. Uh, you can pick between like two and five players and build a pick them entry. Tons of stuff you can do. You can make rival pricks, which you pit like two players against each other, which player will have more like points or yards or, you know, free throws or whatever tons of stuff to do that so that's awesome you know we've all checked out underdog fantasy you know we've all used it for different stuff you know austin matthews scoring goals and stuff that's something i was looking at the other day so that's pretty cool um so hell yeah dude you can sign up today with a promo code uh hgp is that our promo code i think that's it right yeah, you can use our promo code HGP and get your first deposit doubled up to $100 as well as an instant pick em special. Uh, visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the App Store. And don't forget to register with our promo code. That's HGP. Or you can use the promo code SGPN if you don't like us. Uh, but you can also use HGP to get your first deposit doubled up to $100 uh, as well as any instant pick em uh, special. And uh, yeah, man, you know, must be 18 plus and president of the state where underdog fantasy operates. The terms apply. You know, you can start with your play. Call 1 800 522 4700 or visit www.ncpggambling.org. Hell yeah, underdog fantasy. Thank you very much. T- Talent oh, stumbling, uh, stumbling through that was like me trying to talk about orcs. 
<laughs> I'm not. I like reading. I'm not good at reading out loud. All right. Actually, that's not true. I was always great at reading out loud. We, you guys, we had to do that in school a lot. No, reading out loud, it was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but I bet you loved it, eh, Joel? You little fucking monotone. yeah. You, you did like uh, Shakespeare plays. We all yeah. took the characters. So we oh, all read yeah. out. We did that Juliet? too. Juliet. Juliet. No oh, fuck. We did. Uh, I think we did. This a since the sixteenth century, seventeenth century, where they they, they 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 cast women or men as, as female characters. You know, they did yeah, that. Yeah, jeez, Ryan. Although I was pretty pissed off, we did Midsummer Night's Dream, and I had to be Oberon, King of the Fairies. So that. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, boys, we got a thirteen game slate set for Saturday, April thirteenth. Are you ready to rock and roll here, or what? Oh yeah. I'm still laughing. Uh, all right, first game of the talk here. We got the New York Islanders against the New York Rangers. Game itself is uh, in New York, or sorry, rather, it's on New York, which means it's at Madison Square Garden. If it was in New York, it'd be at uh, the USB Center, wherever the hell the Islanders play. Uh, Rangers are home. That's what I was going to say. Islanders on the money line, sitting at plus 142. Rags on the money line, minus 170. Over, under, sitting at five and a half. Over, paying off, minus 115. The under, minus 105. Yeah, I want to bet the Rangers so bad, but it's tough after what we just saw the other day. Um, they've been shit. They've been shit for a couple games now. A lot of questions there, man. Um, with that being said, yeah, fuck it. I'm going to go with the Islanders. We saw this game on April 9th. It was a 4-2 Islanders win. The Islanders have a hell of a lot more to play for than the Rangers do right now. Um, so plus 142, I think there's some value on that. Uh, goaltending worries me. I don't know who I will probably see Varlamov, man. He's been getting a lot of the main starts, and uh, Patrick Sorokin Wasman leaving it on him. Confirmed. Sorokin's confirmed, yeah. Oh, sir. fuck that changes everything. <laughs> Shit. You know, I'm gonna stick with the rags. I'm gonna take the over five and a half, though, at minus 115. Um, I think that's a good look if Sorokin's in that. He has been letting in a lot of squeaky goals here. And these two teams do always show up to play each other, man. It always does mean something. So at the number of five and a half, I don't see why we can't have like a 4-2 final. Uh, empty net also is in play with something like that too. So give me the over. Give me uh, give me the Islanders. Yeah, this should be a good game to kick off a, a big slate here, 12-30. Uh, no, no real play on the side here. I, I would say the Rangers might have something more to play for here because the Islanders – they need one win to lock up the third place in the Metro. In the Rangers, especially if the Hurricanes win tonight, they're only one point ahead of the Canes for a top spot in the Metro. I mean, it doesn't I guess it doesn't matter because you're going to play though. either yeah. the Islanders or, or the shitty wild card team. But still, you want to get that top spot if you can for home ice in, in the following round. But yeah, I do like the over five and a half here at minus 115. I'm kind of surprised it's not up at six, especially given what we've seen this season, 4-2, 5-2. Last year was 6-5 in overtime, 5-3 and 4-3. So, yeah, Islanders have been playing low-scoring games, but Rangers have been kind of opening things up a little bit. Rangers just completely rely on their power play. Uh, Islanders don't have a great penalty call, I don't think. So, uh, yeah. It's the worst uh, in the league. Worst in the league. So, there you go. I would lean Rangers' way, but my only bet is the over. I wouldn't say the Rangers have more to play for, considering the Islanders are still playing for the playoffs. They can't take it lightly here. They they don't have any of the tiebreakers over the teams chasing them because <laughs> all their games go to fucking overtime, so they don't have any regulation wins. Um, and they do play the Penguins still down the stretch, so no. And they, obviously, it's a Rangers game. They're going to be dialed up no matter what. So I won't question the motivation of either team here. Um, yeah, I'm with Amatown with, with the Islanders and the over. Sorokin has been a, a below average goalie since the All-Star break. And um, for whatever reason, he's not used to, to raw, Waz's system there. Not Scary. yet, anyway. Yeah. Um, but still, I think the Islanders are playing uh, better hockey right now than the Rangers. We know the Islanders run hot and cold. Like when they're, they're cold, they lose seven in a row when they're hot and they win five or six in a row. So they're in the middle of a hot streak here. Plus 142, I think, is a good number to take the Islanders here to, uh, to beat the Rangers. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't make Rangers uh, this big of a favorite, even though they do want to avoid that uh, two spot, no doubt. So yeah, Islanders and the over. All right, heading down to the three PM time slot. Oh, sorry, I saw a thing. I just want to say this quickly. I saw a thing the other day. The Rangers are first in the league at winning games against teams that aren't in the playoffs. So like, use that what they may. Maybe are they fraudulent? Are the Rangers just beating up on shit teams all year long? Who knows? And then I guess they're not very good against teams that are in the playoffs. So I don't know. I forget where I saw that, but just figured I'd float that one out there and be a that's prick. A, that's a good I'm, nugget I'm, there. Uh, mm-hmm. They get to play the Metro, which every team sucks besides mm-hmm. the 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 Hurricanes. So maybe that helps a little bit. 
the mid tro. Um, all right, moving down to the 3 p.m. time slot here. We have the Seattle Kraken against the Dallas Stars. Game itself is in Dallas here. Uh, Seattle on the money line, sitting at plus 195. Stars on the money line at minus 238. Uh, stars on the puck line at minus one and a half, sitting at plus 110. Over unders at six. Oh, we're paying off plus 100. The under minus 120. Um, Two teams coming off some pretty tough losses here. With that being said, Dallas's loss was the least against an actual formidable team. Uh, yes, they got shut out by uh, shut out by the Jets and our boy Larry Brassois. I think it was a three nothing final or something like that. They're looking to bounce back here, and I expect them to do so heavily. Uh, I think they want to they want to head into the postseason doing great, man. This is arguably. I don't know, in my opinion, the top team in the West. Obviously, Colorado was something to say about that too. But I really like Dallas. Um, so I like them in this game. Minus 238 is a lot of juice. Uh, I'll be looking maybe towards like a team total or something like that after getting shut out. I'm sure those big guns over there, you know, the, the Jason Robertsons of the world, uh, they're going to want to put the biscuit in the basket. Duchesne has been a great pickup for this team. He's been fantastic. Uh, Tyler Sagan's been getting his game back too. So these guys want to have a good showing. And then on the opposite end, Seattle, they're, they're out of the playoffs. What do they got? Like three games left for Christ's sakes. They're not going to make it. They just got their shit kicked by the San Jose Sharks. Like, uh, yeah, I guess it was, they had like 52 shots on net or something stupid like that. And that uh, young Cooley goalie just you know, stood on his head. But anyways, it's the end of the season. Nothing to play for. You just got embarrassed by San Jose. Like they're just waiting to mail this in and for this whole season to be over here. So I expect Dallas to show up and the Seattle to just kind of go through the motion. Seattle team total is a good look. Maybe Seattle in regulations, probably like minus 170. Don't hate the puck line either. Minus Talon, one, Talon. Just 110. What, what's your lock, Talon? You wrote, you wrote it down already. Oh, Dallas and regulation, minus 140. That is there the odds. Go. I forgot. <laughs> You're right. I looked into that. I don't know. It's been a – dude, I've got two hours lead. I'm tired. It's been a long day. Um, over, under in this game, don't really have a side. I love it either way. Probably leaning towards – Probably leaning towards the under here because I want to see Dallas like step up and get the defense going. Um, Ottinger has been great too. So like, let's get like a fucking like a four-one final or a five-nothing final and just kick the shit out of Seattle. Don't even give them a chance. Yeah, not much to add there. I love Dallas here. Dallas puck line plus one ten. They're uh, twelve and four in their past sixteen games. Eleven of those wins have been by at least two goals. Yeah, Seattle can't score much right now, and Dallas is playing lockdown defense. Besides against you know against Winnipeg there somehow bounce back from their last bad loss with a 7-4 win in Colorado. So like the stars on the puck line with a slight lean to the under given how they're playing recently. Yeah, love the stars here. They don't have the one seed locked up just yet. I mean, they're they're most certainly almost certainly going to get it, but uh, it's not a done deal. Yeah, they're cracking. Uh, they were the obviously the better team against the Sharks there a bit. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Sharks came to play in that one. Um, <laughs> not really but they they got lucky anyway uh yeah I, I totally agree with you guys on the stars nothing more to say uh i think they're the far superior team of course and they still have a lot of shit to play for and they want to go into the playoffs rolling you know the drill so yeah stars all the way um yeah you can do the puck line or regulation team total dealer's choice um cracking or uh yeah, their goaltending has kind of failed them down the stretch as well with uh you know once they realize they got not much to play for and yeah stars and the uh give me give me the over six even money um stars offense will should be able to do their job just need a couple goals from the crack and to to get this to seven but yes yeah, much much heavier on the stars there all right so moving down to the 4 p.m time stop yeah the winnipeg jets against the colorado avalanche massive game here with massive implications uh jets are on the money line are sitting at plus 124 the game is in colorado by the way abs on the money line at minus 148 over unders at six overpaid off minus 125 the under plus 105 mr meyer uh big ass game here how do you think this one's gonna play off <sighs> i like the uh play on words there because like this that? will be the uh <laughs> the playoff matchup in the first round. Um, this is they're both tied on points. Jets just have a tiebreaker there with the regulation wins. And but yeah, this is a, a, a Jets played a good game against the Stars. Uh, Brassois was awesome in that game. He's been like almost as good at Hellbuck over the course of the season. Uh, if you could believe that, considering Hellbuck's going to win the Vesna. Um, but yeah, Avalanche here they're getting ranting back for this game almost certainly. And yeah, I know that the Avalanche play the Knights on Sunday, so we will probably see Georgia for this one, and then Annan on Sunday. I I have no intel on that, no intuition, but uh, that would be my lean at the moment. Um, but uh, best, yeah, I'd rather have Annan for for this game. But any, you you're gonna say something? No, I was just gonna say I heard a lot of like 
I was online. And I was looking like call, you Colorado fans. You like Ananen over Gorgiev, eh? Like he's your guy. We call him Forgiev because he lets in four goals every game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair <laughs> yeah. enough. Yeah, so it, it's yeah he's he's an all star though. All those wins. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a uh, avalanche here, no doubt. Minus 150 or so. I like that quite a bit. Jets are on a roll. What are they doing? Uh, four or five in a row now, including against some good teams. Mm-hmm. But the Avalanche here, I think, to to basically seal home ice advantage, not for certain, but uh, to really uh, get a good handle on it, I think the uh, the Avalanche will, will come out rolling. And, oh, McKinnon, is he had a monster game against the Wild on, on Wednesday. Hat trick. And all three of the goals were just, just – they were uh, typical McKinnon goals, just speed, power, and uh, – yeah, and, and the, just the, the composer to finish at the end of it. So I think he's going to keep rolling here. Be like, oh, him and Kucherov are just like oh, men on a mission right now. Like the way they're playing, mm-hmm. they're getting their, their cookies, no doubt. And um, yeah, I think he'll show up for this one as well. So minus 148, love the avalanche and uh, lean to the over six, kind of, but uh, you know, playoff kind of atmosphere. It, it makes me a little bit more um, reluctant to, to bet it myself, but uh, definitely betting the abs here. Yeah, you got uh, all star Alexander Gorgiev and all, joining all star uh, Jack Campbell, his former greats there to, to grace the grace the all star game here. Uh, no strong play here, you know. I, I do want to take the Avs minus one fifty might be a bit too steep. Uh, their, their home record thirty eight and one is pretty impressive. Jets uh, twenty four thirteen and three on the road. But yeah, they won five in a row now, three straight on the road, including that one in Dallas. So can't take against them here, but I. Do lean to the over six minus 120. Haven't bet it yet, but might bet it here, especially if it is Gorgiev to to start. Uh, Avs have been playing a bunch of over games, and Jets are capable of scoring four or five. So over six would be my only play here. The hell did Jack Campbell ever do to anybody? Like, why is he taking traffic? He was an all star. He was was an all star. I'm I'm pumping him up. (laughs) Yeah, okay. Um, (laughs) For this game here, I love Colorado. I'm right there with you. Um, I was talking to uh, my old roommate about this actually today, and he was like, yeah, man, I, I think uh, I think Winnipeg's going to win this game. They got more to play for because they don't want to take Colorado at home ice. It's like, okay, maybe so, but you can make the argument that says Colorado has more to play for because they want to have home ice so they can just beat the piss out of this team in the first round, man. So, And, and Jolie Tasha, Nathan McKinnon has turned into playoff Nathan McKinnon, and that's something you do not want to have to go against. Those goals he scored last night. This guy is so fast. This guy's a cheat code, dude. It's like if you're playing like NHL or something, and you're like doing, I don't know, you're just against some shit team, and you're fucking... I don't know, like the 80s Oilers or some shit like this, or you're just buzzing around through everybody. It's absolutely insane what this guy does on the ice. He's electric. And it's what we've been talking about all year long. This is a guy that can drive games, you know, and he's doing that. He's sick. Uh, so I love Colorado in this game, minus 148. I think that's some fine value uh, over under in this one. I think we're going to see a bit of a shootout here, man. Like, I think uh, I think the Avs are going to put the pressure on and give up, get up early, maybe one or two, that uh, Winnipeg doesn't have any choice but to start cheating and to start playing some heavy offense to you. So uh, the number at six, I like the over minus 125 here. Um, okay, moving down to the 5 p.m. time slot. We have the Buffalo Sabres against the Florida Panthers. Game itself is in Florida here. Buffalo on the money line sitting at plus 180. Panthers on the money line at minus 218. Panthers on the puck line minus one and a half sitting at plus 120. Over under sitting at six. Over paid off minus 105. Uh, the under minus 115 here. This Buffalo team, man, they just broke the hearts of Washington the other night here. They looked pretty decent in that game. Uh, with that being said, the Panthers, they're starting to kind of come into their own again for playoffs. You know, they fell off a little bit there a couple weeks ago. They've been they've been better now. They're 5-4-1 in their past 10 games. But more importantly, they ever since they kicked the shit out of the Senators that one time, like 6 nothing after losing to like the Leafs, the Habs, and, you know, they went to Ottawa, beat the wheels off them. They're a tough loss to the Bruins. But, um yeah, they played shit teams, and Buffalo's not that great, but at least they've been winning shit teams. They got two back-to-back shutouts here. Uh, I don't have any reason that if Bobrovsky's not playing, or Bobrovsky's confirmed. So, yeah, I love it even more, dude. Um, under, I mean the under in this game, though, because uh, Uka Pekalukinen has been absolutely lights out for the Bruins. He's expected to play, and then or not for the Bruins, for the Sabres. And then Bobrovsky's been so sick. Uh, minus 218 is a lot of juice to bet here in Florida. I don't mind looking to more. It's like a regulation play. I think there's some value on that. So Panthers and regulation. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the under. 
yeah, Panthers are, are big favorites here for a reason. One, three of their past four games, only loss was in Boston in overtime. Three other games were, were shutout wins against Ottawa twice. Then Columbus, uh, Buffalo on the road. Most recent games lost uh, 3-2 and 3-1 in Detroit and Dallas. So Florida, back-to-back shutouts for for each goalie there, starting uh, Stolarz and Bob. I don't really mind either one to start here. So yeah, love the under six at minus 125. Maybe a, a Panthers puck line at plus one twenty. They've been allowing quite a few, quite few goals while also being able to put up, you know, three or four themselves. So I think Panthers here are the safe play. Maybe a parlay piece, maybe a, a puck line, but the under is the best bet. Yeah, the Panthers are definitely looking more like themselves. Uh, not only winning games, but the if we go under the hood, their expected goals for percentage are much more like they were when they when they were dominating the the league. Like we when they were losing those games uh, about a month ago now, three three weeks or so, maybe it's more like a month. They were like what it was like bottom ten in terms of that stat. Now they're the top four. I know. Yeah, you mentioned they played some weak teams, but they also played the the Leafs, the Bruins twice in that stretch. So it's not just a bunch of cupcakes. So yeah, I think the Panthers are rolling right now, and as they should be. And yeah, getting more encouraged about them in the postseason and the Sabers. Yeah, coming off a nice win over the Capitals, uh, mm-hmm. that dominated them. Capitals are just so, so bad though. I don't know how they're even in the mix to make the playoffs. Um, <laughs> they're pretty much dead now. But anyway, uh, Panthers here just going to keep rolling here expect them to win this game by uh, two or three goals. So give me the puck line at plus 120. I like that a little bit. Actually, I like that a lot. Um, yeah, for a total, I, I don't really know. When you take a puck line, you have to think that the, the one team's going to score a bunch. So it's tough to take an under in, in that respect. But if I had to pick a total, I, I would still take the under. But I'm not betting that. Just uh, give me the Panthers all the way here to uh, keep it rolling on the last uh, week of the season. All right, heading down to the 5 p.m. time slot again here. We have the New Jersey Devils against the Philadelphia Flyers here. Game itself is in Philly. Oh, we got a rivalry game, boys. Look out, this is getting more yeah. heated than this. Devils on, the, Devils on the money line sitting at minus 102. Flyers on the money line at minus 118. Over under sitting at six. Overpaid on minus 130. Under plus 110. Uh, Gilbert, what are your thoughts on this magnificent battle we have out here in Philadelphia? <laughs> Fuck the Devils. Wayne Simmons night retiring as a flyer on on, on this uh, great evening in Philadelphia. Probably gonna be a good time there inside the Farg. Devils without Jack Hughes now out for this season. Coming off a, a win against Toronto, but probably a win they didn't deserve. Looking at the uh, shots on goal, they've been kind of downsliding recently. And the Flyers, yeah, they looked like themselves again against the Rangers on Thursday night. Sam Erson looked good, so Flyers coming back home. Love them here at minus one eighteen. Uh, no strong feeling for a total. Probably a lean over six minus 130. Could easily see the, the Devils giving up four or five here to the Flyers. And like a, maybe like a 5-2 win type of thing here. Yeah, I, I was liking the Flyers. But then uh, Talon reminded me that this is a massive robbery game. So the Devils mm-hmm. will certainly be up for it. So um, you know what? <laughs> I'm packing off my, my Flyers pick here. Yeah, still still leaning that way. Um yeah, I mean the Flyers. Yeah, they were they're playing well even when they're they're losing the games. Obviously, not the nine three one to the Habs, but in general, they're just getting uh, bad luck in terms of their, you know, their their finishing was terrible and they're bad. <laughs> they have terrible goaltending, so that doesn't help. But if they can get those things to turn around a little bit, then then they're going to win this game. So yeah, I'll still go with the Flyers here. And yeah, Devils game. We know Jack Hughes, of course, so uh, a little tougher to back the over. But we just saw him play without Jack Hughes against the Leafs, and there was what. 10 goals in that game, nine goals in that game. Uh, so yeah, I think the, the over six here would be the play for a total. But uh, yes, heavier on the on the flyer side. You know who's in that for this game? Because they've been riding Jake Allen pretty hard lately for no reason, right? Um, so I'll be looking for that. With that being said, I kind of like the Devils, bro. Minus one or two. Like, yeah, Wayne Simmons and stuff. But you know what? Wayne Simmons was a pretty goddamn good devil for half a year, too. 62 <laughs> games, 68 penalty minutes or some shit like this. Yeah, he, that's, he just torched the Flyers, bro. And so, you know, the hockey gods work in funny ways. And, you know, they want to get back at this asshole that the Flyers got behind their bench here. So they're going to make the they're gonna make them lose to the Devils on Wayne Simmons night. And, you know, that's just how that's going to work. Uh, this is a nothing game. I'm sorry. Like, um, yes, watch it if you're a fan of the team, Ryan. Have fun and stuff, but like, I don't know. I like watch the intro. Give give some kudos to our boy Wayne Simmons. That's cool. But realistically, like, 
if you were to, if we were to play this game at the beginning of the season, everybody would be all in on the Devils, right? I know that you know no Jack Hughes definitely hurts this team, but there is still some talent there. Um, I don't know if I can say the same against Philly. Yes, they had a big win against the the Rangers, but it's just looking ugly, man. Like I'm sorry, you scratch your captain. If I'm on a team and somebody scratches my captain, like I'm pissed. Okay, so there has to be fucking something going on in the dressing room that just isn't right. It doesn't sit well with me with this Flyers team. So I'm taking the Devs uh, over under. Like you gotta go with the over in this game, right? Six minus thirty. I know that uh, the Flyers just went under and this shit like this, and the Devils obviously know Jack Hughes, but I can't trust. I can't bet this game to go under. So give me the over. Um, okay, do to do. Let me pull this up. We are brought to you by Avo. Uh, we're proud to partner up with Avo, the premier sports betting uh, arbitrage tool. Uh, if you're new to arbitrage sports betting, it's very simple. Basically, betting both sides of a bet at two different sports books to lock in a profit. Uh, the uh, the Able tool scans the sports books looking for discrepancies in the odds and tells you how much money you need to place with each sports book and the expected profit. Uh, the tool is super easy to use and lightning fast as speed is a big part of arbitrage sports betting. Uh, the best part is Avo is currently free to use without restrictions, baby. That's right, completely free. Get started today at uh, arbsversodds.com. Uh, that's arbsversodds.com. Uh, A R B S V S, as in verse, odds, O D D S, dot com. That's absversodds.com, baby. Hell yeah. Um, all right, moving down to the 5.30 p.m. time slot here. We have the Tampa Bay Lightning against the Washington Capitals. Game itself is in Washington here. Bolts on the money line sitting at minus 135. Caps on the money line at a plus 114. Over-under sitting at 6. Overpaying off minus 118. The under minus 102. Hard to go back to the well with the Lightning here after that fucking stinker we saw them lay last night. Um, with that being said, Julie touched on it. The Capitals are god awful, uh, and they've been losing lately, which isn't good either, right? So, kind of tough to go to even want to look Washington's way here. They have been better at home than they've been on the road, but I mean, at this point of the season, I guess it does still mean something because they are still battling here. But I don't know, honestly, I'm probably going to stay away from this game. If anything, I'm just going to bet like Kucherov, like over one and a half points or something. This guy needs what, like two more assists to hit 100 assists on the year or something like that. So. Uh, yeah, that'll be my play for this over under. We'll probably see Vasilevsky. Didn't play last game, so I imagine he'll suit up for this one. He wants to get some reps probably before playoffs. Um, shit, dude. I don't I, honestly like this is a pass game for me. Just bet Kucherov. Yeah, Kucherov prop is probably the, the best in the bet here. But yeah, Lightning minus 135. Don't hate that. I know they got nothing to play for pretty much. But yeah, should be Vasi back in. I'll wait for uh, Joel's intuition to confirm that though. But yeah, you got Kucherov still, still trying to stay hot here. The team trying to stay hot, bounce back from a loss. Uh, and yeah, the Capitals are just bad. They've lost, what, uh, seven of the past eight, the one win against Detroit. They got out shot by 20 shots. So, yeah, like the Lightning here, minus 135 as the Capitals uh, stumble. Yeah, actually, I wouldn't be surprised to see Tompkins here. Um, I don't know he played the last one, but... Uh... You know, if they're resting him for one game, why not two? Uh, and especially when they are settled into this this uh, wild card to one spot. Um, but yeah, the, <laughs> the Capitals are eh, desperate as fuck, and they're still plus one fourteen dogs to a team that has a little motivation. And who knows? They could rest other players. Uh, that's that's the way things are trending in the NHL now these days. Um, yeah, this, this, I'm with talent. I, I don't, I don't have a read on this one at all. If anything, I would just take the uh, Capitals like a, a last stand here as dogs. Maybe a small bet on them, but uh, no, nah, I, I got, I got nothing for this one. If anything, just wait for the goalie confirmation, and and then if it's Vasilevsky, take the under. That's that's what I would look at if, if anything, or the Kucherov points like Talon was saying. I feel like John Cooper would respect the game enough to not rest anyone in, in this one. Looking ahead, they do have the Sabres and Leafs, so I could see. He's him. a lawyer. No Lawyers don't there. respect anything. <laughs> Fair enough. What the fuck? <laughs> um, all right, moving down to the 10 p.m. or 7 p.m. slides. So time slot here. We have the Detroit Red Wings against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Game itself is in Toronto, baby, on a Saturday night. Red Wings on the money line, sitting at plus 150. Uh, Leafs on the money line at minus 180. Over under, sitting at six and a half. Overpaying off, minus. 130, the under plus 110. Sam Smob has been confirmed uh, in this game. 
they're going to want to get Sammy rolling again. I say rolling again, like he slipped off. He had one bad game, but they're going to want to get them trending back in the right direction. So I'm hoping and expecting him to have a decent showing in this game. Minus 180. I think that's fine value on the Leafs here. Um, and you know, they're going to be looking for offense too, which kind of scares me a little bit, I guess, from a defensive point of view, but they're going to be trying to get Matthew some goals here. Uh, they got three games left. If they can get two, that covers the 60 or the 70 rather. And then you don't got to worry about playing them when it comes to having Florida and Tampa for your next two games. Um, so I'm, I think the Leafs are going to come out buzzing here. And plus you want to, you want to get this record for Toronto in Toronto on a Saturday night, right? Like that's, that's just pretty sweet, man. The next, this is the last home game of the season here. So everything's kind of lining up to, uh, to tend to go that way. So I love the Leafs and minus, uh, 180 here. Uh, I'll be looking at Matthew shots in this game. I know he hasn't really been seeing the ice time as of late because they've been, uh, splitting up him, Marner and Nylander to much chagrin. Uh, but they have been mixing the lines up a little bit on the fly as well, as Sheldon keeps tend to do. So love the Matthews goal. Love the Matthews shots. Um, look for like Domi assists, maybe. That could be a decent look too. I don't know what that number's sitting at. Uh, over under in this game, definitely leaning towards the over, especially after what we saw last game uh, and before that a couple as well. So over, Matthews, Matthews, Domi. Nealander's looking for a... Uh, 100 points as well. I think he's sitting at like 96 or something. So maybe look for some Nylander points too. Man, he's trying to get to 100 to be the first Leafs winger of all time to reach it. Yeah, not much to add. Leafs, yeah, lean that way. Minus 180 is probably a bit too steep to bet, but I am on the over 6.5 at minus 130. Um, yeah, should be a, a high-scoring game here. Red Wings just lost 6-5. Leafs just had a, had a, lost 6-5 as well. So see a high-scoring game here. A talent. What is this about? Like the power play struggling? I saw someone uh, there was an article written that, that they should maybe put Bertuzzi and Domi on on the top power play to keep that together. <laughs> they did, but they didn't did do they? it. They, when Marner was hurt, both those guys were taking first no. line reps. But uh, okay. yeah, so it didn't really change. Like, who are you going to take off? Tavares and or which one of those guys is going to stand in front of the net? I guess maybe Bertuzzi. I'd make the argument Tavares is more skilled in that position than he is. So, uh, you know what it is, man. Like. They just got this team when it comes to the power play, they're guilty of trying to pass the puck into the net. You know, there, there's blatant times where they have great opportunities just to get a to get a shot on net with traffic or a nice little one timer, and they're just trying to find that perfect pass. And you know, until they until they smarten up and and you know put an end to that, then yeah, it, it's gonna struggle. But this is least power play. It's something that can click just like that. The playoffs could start, and with the amount of talent they have on there, they could go off on a fucking like five for five tear, no problem. Obviously, it's been a problem for the past like three months, so that's not not very you know we don't have much faith in believing that, but the talent is there. I, I just don't know how much mixing and matching at this point of the season is really going to do for you, you know? All right. Yeah, fair enough. That's all I got. I don't know much else. I agree with you guys with the over six and a half and definitely with the, the Matthews props. I'll be hitting those tomorrow. I haven't done it a little bit the, on Saturday at the, you know, but he only, he only had a three shots. I think um, didn't hit the goal. Should have done that. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I think that he'll get, I think he's got a good chance to score two here. So, that's the way I'm looking. Red Wings give up a ton of shots too, so this is a good opportunity for Matthews to let her rip. I, I need him to get seventy. I, I might start hedging my bets. I, I, not this game, but the following games if, if there's an under option. So I have him like twenty-five to one to get seventy. Dude, I'm just happy that he got away from sixty-seven, so he can get whatever he gets now. <laughs> I don't care. So uh, I will say though, I will preface this: the Wings show up against the Leafs, man. They always have. They always do. So. Uh, no, just don't don't sleep on the Red Wings here. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a fast paced game. We'll put it that way. Justin Hole revenge game if he's playing. He won't be. <laughs> James Reimer revenge game if he's playing. I don't know. Is Lion confirmed? Who knows? Um, all right, moving down to the 7 p.m. time slot here. We have Le Montreal Canadiens, Le Habitat, and Montreal de Blue Blanc et Rouge against the Canada Senators here. Game itself is in Canada. Montreal on the money line sitting at plus 136. Canada on the money line at minus 162. Over under sitting at six and a half. Both over under paying off minus 110 here. Um, I really like the Habs in this game, man. It looks like they're starting Caden Primo. His numbers are actually pretty decent. 9.2.91 goals against average, which is actually good for this Montreal team. Uh, more importantly, a .910 save percentage, which is decent. Jonas Corpusello has literally been like made of holes this entire season he's been fucking shit Sen stuck or sucks stutzel's uh day-to-day with an upper body injury so he's got hurt nips uh that's tough on him um i i think the montreal is playing like slightly better hockey right now the sends every time i watch them it gets ugly yes i know they just beat the lightning congratulations you did it that's great but uh, this is a team that we've always talked about that's been playing up 
to better teams here. What are you going to do when you play the Habs? And this is a pretty big rivalry, man. These guys are pretty close to each other. It's like a four-hour drive or some shit like that. So, um, yeah, I don't know. We did see Ottawa win this game, but that was in January 23rd. Much has changed since then. Uh, and I, I hate to admit it, man, but that uh, that Slavkowski, Suzuki, and uh, Caulfield line has actually been looking pretty good towards the end of the year. So, um, yeah, I like Montreal in this game over under. I'm leaning towards the under, though, man. Uh, I don't see the Sun scoring a lot of goals lately. And uh, the Habs, I just – one line team, baby. That's all they got is one line. Yeah, I'd probably lean to the under as well. No strong play on the total, but I'm going the other way. I, I like the Sens here. Minus 162 is a bit steep. Maybe a, a puck line play, a plus 150. I probably won't end up betting this game, but if, if you do want to bet it for some reason, if you're going to the game or whatnot, I think puck line is a good play. Ottawa, yeah, it's a rivalry game, but Ottawa's won eight straight meetings. Uh, six of those eight wins have been by at least two goals, including 4-1 and 6-2 back in January. So I think... Uh, Sends just a just a more more mature team. They have more veterans, and Montreal <laughs> Montreal has the up and coming young, young team. So I think Ottawa is still a step ahead of them here. I think they get it done on home ice. Uh, also, the final home game too. So if we're playing that angle, I think uh, that's worth. Oh, one more thing: both teams have been, have been going have been like this is their same rest, but Montreal has been traveling more, and Ottawa is just coming home. So it's uh like Ottawa there for that reason. I mean, it's not even their real home, so. <laughs> yeah, Ryan Ryan likes the mature, right? We know that much. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Who's a veteran? Other than Claude Giroux, what fucking notable veteran do they have on the Sens? Who, the, the the Canadians have no veterans. I mean, Stutzel's, Gallagher. I guess Stutzel's not a veteran, but like they, they, have, they have guys. They have some guys. Uh, Who's that guy on the back end for Montreal? It's like Matheson. Matheson. Yeah. They got so many old fucks on Montreal. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> They're both young teams, but I just Claude yeah. Giroux. Just, just, just Claude Giroux is, is <laughs> all you need, right? Just slap shots, just slap shots and shootouts, baby. That's all we yeah. need. Chabot, yeah. Chikrin are, are both late tw- mid to late twenties now. So yeah. <laughs> Give me the Habs. Some with talent here. I uh, like them quite a bit. Um, Ottawa, yeah, minus one sixty two, and then this rivalry game. Uh, I don't think so. Not laying that. We like the Sens as dogs, not as big favorites. So, give me the Canadians. Um, oh, Doug Reed shows up. Uh, the, the Oshawa Generals are up four to three. Uh, Talon's talking about that yesterday or two days ago. And uh, the Denver that. Pioneers. What did I say? The Denver Pioneers came Denver. through yeah. against mm-hmm. the BU. Uh, so uh, they're they're going for the, uh, the the championship in the uh, NCAA tourney. So good for us there. Um, Anyway, uh, Canadians, plus 136, like that a lot. They, uh, I think that they are playing better hockey right now. And uh, goaltending, <laughs> I guess everyone has better goaltending than Sens. So that's another advantage for the Habs. And they've been a strong road team too. So And they're in every game. Like if, when they're losing, they're still in every fucking game. Uh, they never give up. And the Sens uh, aren't, aren't – <laughs> they do tend to give up. So giving the Habs here, I like this uh, bet quite a bit. Leaning to the under six and a half, but uh, – probably just betting canadians i'm loving all the Oshawa generals chat we're talking in the chat here we got my pops popping in we got doug reed saying all the fucking let's win this thing and let's go meet up at the stag's head for some karaoke and chicken wings boys let's get after it um all right move down the apo time slot go jenny's we got the boston bruins against the pittsburgh penguins game itself is in pittsburgh here uh boston the money line sitting at minus 135 penguins on the money line at plus 114 over under sitting at six over paying off minus 105 the under minus 115 here um dude if swayman's playing i'm gonna be so scared but i'm seeing old mark i don't know i don't think that's official or confirmed or anything like that swayman scares the shit out of me but you know what in for a penny, in for a pound. You got to believe, right? And this team has a hell of a lot to play for right now. These Pittsburgh Penguins, man, they are in the war of their life. And if they're fucking sniffing it, I feel like they've gone too far now to lose out the last three games here, man. So they got a hell of a lot of competition. Don't get me wrong. This Boston Bruins team is going to come out swinging. They always do, especially on a Saturday night here. Uh, but I love the Penguins in this game, dude. Sometimes you got to go with heart. And Sidney Crosby's good has what it takes to will this team into existence. Also, if you're looking, the Pens have been unbelievable at home this year, man. 22, 13, and 4 has been absolutely fantastic for this team. Uh, as of late, too, their record. They're so goddamn hot. They're 7, 0, oh, and 3. They've gotten points in all of their games, dude. So uh, love that play. It's a lot of juice to even take the Penguins plus 
one and a half, minus 225. But like if you're Archer or something, maybe that's not a bad look, man, because every game that they've either been winning or going to overtime, uh, especially against good teams. But I'm just going to take them on the money line at plus 114 here. Uh, over under in this game. Kind of leaning towards the under, dude. Whether it's Omar or Swayman, Nadalkovich is probably going to play this game. He's been absolutely sick here. Um, yeah, let's go. Give me the under. Also, ooh, Carlson, shots on goal props. This guy's been coming through a lot for me lately. He just fucking wires pucks at the at the twine. Yeah, I, I don't got really anything for this game. I guess lean to the Penguins uh, plus 114. I guess arguably have more to play for because they're playing for a playoff spot. Boston still needs to lock up the... Top spot in the Atlantic, but they have Washington and Ottawa the rest of the way. That seems like, you know, probably an easy enough thing to do there. And yeah, you, you can't bet against the Penguins right now. At home, they're they're decent. Boston's decent on the road. But, yeah, Penguins plus 114 would be the only look here. Yeah, I think I agree with you guys on the Penguins. But, I like, uh, yeah, two bets in this game. First of all, yeah, the Pens for a lot of the reasons you guys are saying. Um, Bruins, yeah, of course, they, they do want that one seed, which is vital. They don't want to play Tampa. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that's got to keep them motivated. So we're, it's not a question of motivation because the Pens, obviously, <laughs> they got a ton of that themselves. But, yeah, Crosby is on another level right now. He's playing like this all season long. I mean, he, he really has been. A I mean, mm-hmm. couple slumps, but uh, that happens to every player. But he's been uh, basically the best player in the league alongside McKinnon and Kucherov for the past month. Uh, he's the only reason why this team are, are, are in a playoff position. Yeah, so give me the pens here like that. Nadalkovich had a bad game last game, but uh, I think that he'll re- rebound here. Like They keep riding this guy, even though Jari's got similar numbers. But uh, Nadalkovich, he's got the heart of an orc after all, so uh, Hell yeah. <laughs> keep going there. Um, for similar reasons, give me the under six like this bet as well. We know about the Bruins' defense. Penguins' defense is actually pretty solid, and they never fucking score on the power play, so you don't have to worry about that too much. Um, good goalies on both sides, and yeah, the Penguins just they have trouble scoring except when Alex Line is letting in you know two or three cheapies. So, yeah, give me, give me the Penguins and give me the under. Um, one more thing here for this uh, if the Penguins win, this guy has been absolutely lights out as of late on the run. Gino Melkin has just pushed the clock back, he's been so fucking sick for this Penguins teams lately. Uh, ever since they picked up Bunting to put him on his line, they kind of rejuvenated him a little bit, and he's just been going off, man. So, if the Penguins do win, I think he's going to be a big part of it. Look for his like numbers, maybe on like uh, maybe not a shot on goal prop, but maybe like a point prop or something like that. I imagine he'll be on the board if they do get the dub. Uh, okay, moving down to the 8 p.m. time slot. We got the Columbus Blue Jackets against the Nashville Predators. Game itself is in Smashville here. Columbus on the money line sitting at plus 225. Preds on the money line at minus 278. Over under sitting at six. Over paying off minus 120. The under uh, plus 100 here. Preds are on the second night of a back to back here. Uh, they're currently playing. Who are they playing tonight? Uh, Black, Chicago. Uh, they're up 4 uh, 1 in Chicago. So there's going to be a little bit of travel here. I don't know how far. Chicago is from Nashville. Is that it? Ryan, you're up. I'll, 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 I'll search it up. Keep talking. It's okay, not that so that, close. It's not. Okay, well, there it's you go. Maybe this, okay, well, fucking whatever. But a um, lot of juice to play for the Preds here. Minus 278. With that being said, Lankanen is playing tonight. So I imagine we'll see UC Saros uh, in this game here tomorrow. So I do like that. Uh, leads me to kind of lean a little bit towards the under. Maybe the Preds will be a little bit tired. Maybe they'll be taking the Blue Jackets. Uh, you know, not so seriously because let's face it, they're the fucking Blue Jackets. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna lean towards the under plus 100 minus 278 is way too much juice. Don't really like the puck line. Probably not a lot of value on regulation play. So probably uh, just gonna be sitting with the under when it comes to this game. Yeah, give, give, give me the Preds here. I like the Preds on the puck line, possibly minus 110. Um, on no days rest this season, they're seven zero in one, so they're what? pretty good. On, yeah. Crazy on back to back. Have they have two solid goalies with Lankinen and Saros? Lankinen started uh, tonight, so it'll be Saros at home here against the Blue Jackets. Blue Jackets lost three straight on the road, three nothing, five two, and four nothing. So yeah, give me Nashville on the puck line as well as the under six at plus one hundred. Oh, I got nothing for this game, so that's a good reason to bring up this question from the chat. One sharp shark asks. He's, well, he's got a question for that handsome fucker, Talon motherfucking Jenkins. Aww. Can this Predators team realistically win a cup? Yes. Yes, they can. Look at look at the build of the team, okay? When it comes to lines, there's depth in there. Uh, even And, you know, I'm going to say that first line, too, is a fucking stud, dude. Roman Yossi just 
I think he scored 44. He got his 44th goal tonight, and that's like the most goals uh, in a season by any Pred of all time. So they're riding that. They're riding that wave. They got Moxie, man. You look you at the Forsberg. back end. Yeah, what did I say? Yossi? I meant to say Forsberg. I think so, yeah. Yeah, well, I was just about to bring up Yossi, too. This guy is arguably, or arguably a Norris defenseman he is a norris defenseman he's not gonna win this year but he's definitely in the conversation and he has won it before uh and then most importantly man they have fucking fantastic goaltending okay like uc sorrow is just an absolute guy lankin is there to step in as well if they needed ryan just touched on that um but the one thing i like the most about this team man, and if you go back to our division pre or to our team previews at the beginning of the season i remember bringing up with nashville that i was i was hearing a lot of people talk about this team is gelling there's moxie the dressing room's a good place, yo. And when it comes to playoff, that little extra fucking kick in the ass, sometimes that's what you need because you're playing for each other. You're not just playing for the team. You're not just playing for yourself. You're not just playing to win the Stanley Cups. You're playing for each other, and you're playing for the fucking city, man. And I, I don't want to get so sappy, and I'm not just disregarding the analytics and all that stuff. They're going to be underdogs, man. They're going to be underdogs in almost every series that they're going to be in here, but I'm not going to rule them out for a single fucking second. So I think uh, I think that this team does have a chance to win a cup. We see special things like this happen all the time, and generally speaking, these are the type of special teams that that happens to yeah, you brought up uh, you know the culture of the team, and a big part of that is uh, Andrew Burnett coming in. Like this guy, you know, a big Burnett Burnett fan. Love him as a coach. Think he is deserving of at least a finalist for the Jack Adams with what he's done with a team that's pretty thin. You know, they they got some top end talent, but behind you know the, the big guys, there's not a lot there. Um, I don't think realistically they can win the cup just because the West is so fucking tough. Like if the Predators were in the, the three spot in the Metro. Or the the force or the I don't know if they have to play like the Rangers or the Hurricanes I think they'd have a chance but uh, no they're gonna have to go through the Canucks who beat them every game I think this season then they'd have to go to uh, I don't know Dallas Winnipeg Avalanche I don't know it's just a tougher path in the West I don't I don't see it happening but uh, I'm rooting for it I mean the Predators uh, that that'd be a fun story. Got some bets in the long odds, but I don't think it'll happen. It's just a too tough of a conference. And they're not ready. Like they got so much young guys. They don't have the depth. Like maybe next year they, they get some more maturity, like some experience from these playoff run, a couple more free agent additions, and then they'll be ready to roll. I could see the Predators taking down the Canucks in the first round. I mean, that's likely to be their matchup. Uh, I know they're I didn't we're know talking about winning lost. the cup. They can win around. No, I, I, I'm yes, and and that that goes toward uh, yeah. So if they get past them, then they play the Oilers or the Kings. Whoever comes out of that, I still if they're, like them. Either long of those series, I, I don't I don't hate them against either of those teams, yeah. especially the especially the Kings. So, it, I mean, I don't think they, they can win a cup, but Soros can can win a round or two. If you, if they win those two series, like the all, all chips are on the table, man. Because look out for the team with heart having success at that time of the year. Uh, that's all I'm going to say is uh, special things happen in this league. And that's why this league is so fucking sick, man. And if they have gotten to that point, there's no reason why they can't continue the upsets, you know? Now, it's a long shot. Like Jolie said, don't get me wrong. Look at the monsters they're fucking going against, right? They would have to play like either one of like Colorado or Dallas or even the Jets or not the yeah, the Jets or even fucking Vegas. Like there's a lot of monsters out there in the West. That's a good point that Joel brought up. But I, I don't know, man. Like just look out, look out for the team with heart. That's all I'm gonna say. It's it's a special thing we got going on here in Nashville. And also, I respect any team that sat there and said, We fucking hate you too. We're not going to go see you two, this fucking shitty goddamn band of the fucking fuck Bono, loser ass motherfucker. We know what we're going to do. We're going to stay home and fucking review some tape here because we're hockey players. Fuck you too. So that's Team of Destiny, baby, right there. I hate you too. Not you two, the band you two. <laughs> uh, all right, we're done the 10 p.m. time slot here. We have the Vancouver Canucks against the Edmonton Oilers. Speaking of the Devils here, uh, game itself is in Edmonton. Canucks on the money line sitting at plus 120. Oilers on the money line at minus 142. Uh, over under sitting at six and a half. Over paying off minus 105. The under minus 115 here. Um, Edmonton on the second night of a back-to-back here. They're currently losing to the Coyotes, actually. So that's not great. Um, where is that game? Is that game in Edmonton, Edmonton tonight? Yeah, it is in Edmonton. Okay. I'm watching it. You think I'd know, right? It's literally on right now. But, Might be on Utah um, next year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. Pick it to Nets tonight. to probably see Skinner tomorrow. I don't really think that makes much of a difference. Um, Oilers aren't looking that great, dude. They only have like nine shots on goal. They're kind of struggling a little bit. 
do they get up no against McDavid. Vancouver? No McDavid too. You're right. That's a good point. Yeah, I you know what? I don't really like either of these teams in the long run here, but no McDavid always on the second night of a back to back. I'll take oh. the Canucks at plus money. I, oh no, McDavid in the, in the Arizona game. They might he might come back for this one. Mac, I think he will. Yeah, I don't know. Keep an eye on that. But even so, dude, like I'll take the Canucks at plus one twenty here. Um, fuck, dude, that still no Demko scares me though. Like that's absolutely horrifying. He's got to even now. It's too little, too late. If he comes back now, like what does he got? Like three games left to try and like get his moxie back. I'm worried about the Canucks, dude. But anyways, I'll take him plus 120 in this game here. Um, over, under. Oilers aren't really scoring too many goals lately. Is that crazy to say? I know McDavid's been out of the lineup. But actually, you know what? Scratch that. Look at their games. Five, well, I guess 5-1, 4-2. It's going to be tight. This number's at 6.5. I'm going to lean more towards the under here. Uh, minus 115. Yeah, I'm not sure if you guys know. But, I mean, the, the Canucks and Oilers are playing – this game is going to be big to determine who uh, wins the Pacific division here. I mean, to go head to head, if the Oilers beat the Canucks here, they definitely have a chance. Uh, they have to beat the Coyotes first though, tonight. Um, <laughs> I do like the Oilers here at, at minus minus one forty two. Uh, I got them before uh, tonight's game. So it's uh, not factoring that in. I didn't think McDavid would play either way. So if, if he plays, it's just an added bonus here, but yeah, don't trust the Canucks right now, they've been very up and down, with, especially without Demko. No, they've they've been a bit good against Edmonton this year, 6-2 and 4-3, but that was back when Edmonton was really struggling and the Canucks were really hot. So, yeah, Edmonton minus 142, I think, on a back-to-back is a solid look. They're 5-3-0 and on no day's rest. They'll have their better goalie, if you want to call Skinner that, uh, tomorrow. So, yeah, I think they uh, you know stay at home, get this done here on Saturday night. And this one's a tough one to call, especially with these prices. I know the Canucks beat the Oilers in all three games before, but that was early in the season when the Oilers were not so good. Um, but yeah, the, 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 I think it's pretty fair here. I mean, without McDavid, maybe you go with the Canucks here, but I have a suspicion that he'll come back for this one. Um, yeah, that the the six and a half is lined like he is going to play. I mean, with even at a minus one hundred five there, so I like the under six and a half in case he doesn't play. Like. I think that this is going to be a, a, a slower kind of game anyway. Canucks will little bog them down. They're, they're one of the best uh, five and five defensive teams. Not too great at generating offense. And even in the R, they're getting very unlucky lately. Like that game against the Coyotes, oh, they should have fucking walked them. But uh, that was a, a great game by Ingram. And then, um, yeah, just bad luck there. Canucks losing that one in overtime. Um, for this one, I, I got nothing really. If anything, I would just play the under six and a half. All right. I thought you were going to you know, keep it going the way you ended that. But all right, let's keep it moving here. We're going to move down to the 10.30 via time slot. Anaheim Ducks against the LA Kings. Game itself is in LA. Officially clinched a playoff spot. Hooray. Uh, Ducks on the money line sitting at plus 260. Kings on the money line at minus 325. Massive home favorites here. Kings on the puck by minus one and a half. Sit at minus 125. Over under set six. Over paying off plus 100. The under minus 120 here. Uh, we just saw this game the other night. The Ducks kicked the fucking shit. I shouldn't say kick the shit, but beat the Kings three to one. Um, I don't know though. Like, I'm not gonna lie. When I watched the Kings play last night against uh, Calgary, they dismantled them pretty good. And you know, both teams between Calgary and Anaheim suck. But I think Calgary is probably the better team of the two. Maybe there's something too. Those California games always tend to be a little bit of a tight matchup. I know we talked about that before on this show here. Um, I'm going to take the Ducks on the Cowgirl. Give me the Ducks plus one and a half, uh, plus 105 here, man. Maybe if the Kings get up early, I'm going to look for them like plus two and a half or something like that. Uh, realistically, like, can LA even like move up and down within their playoff spots here? Uh, let me look. Let me look. Yeah, Vegas Not... and catch them. Vegas and catch yeah. them. Vegas, wild card two. And yeah, Kings you're right. Three points out. Do they want to play the Oilers again? I mean, if they uh, lose to Arizona, yeah. then uh, that's probably who they'd have to play. Mm. That's going to suck. Nobody wants to see that. Like, no, I don't. I want to see I know. Oilers Vegas in the first round. I don't want to see the Kings in the playoff, playoffs at all, honestly. Well, you're going to, so what are you going to do? I fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, give the Ducks plus one and a half, plus 105. They might even fucking win this game again here. Uh, over, under, shit, dude. I, don't, I will say the Kings have looked okay defensively as of late, so I'm going to lean towards the under 6, minus 120, and we'll get another boring 10.30 p.m. game uh, along with the other boring 10.30 p.m. game. So congratulations, NHL. You did it. You suck. 
Yeah, if, if you lean anyway, I think it has to be to the Ducks here. I know it is a back-to-back. -back. Not sure if it's – I think it's Gibson tonight and so Dostal tomorrow, which it I don't think really ultimately matters. Um, yeah, Ducks plus 260 for a sprinkle, plus one and a half at plus odds. Don't hate that at all, especially because the Kings do play – the trap, even though they're they're winning against bad teams. So yeah, Ducks plus one and a half at plus money, and then the under six at minus one twenty. Uh, Kings are trying to play some low scoring hockey heading into the playoffs. Uh, yeah, minus three twenty five seems a little rich, but I'm not touching the Ducks here. Playing the Flames tonight, and yeah, I guess they want to beat their I don't know their their, their city rivals. I mean, Anaheim's basically LA. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, nothing for me in this one. If anything, I would lean to the under sticks. Dostal, I think, is better than Gibson this year. But, uh, yeah, for me, I'm just going to be sweating this This Kings uh, over 100 and a half points. We need to win all three games, all three shit teams. So, hopefully, uh, they they play like their number suggests and just, just cross the ducks. But, yeah, once again, I got nothing for a Kings game. This team is, uh, yeah, they're, they're weird. I mean, they're, they're lying like they're massive favorites. But I don't, I don't know if we can really trust them uh, to win by margin. So, that makes it tough. To bet a minus three twenty five, maybe just parlay Kings minus three twenty five with Scotty Scheffler or something like that. <laughs> uh, he's not guaranteed to win, goddamn. Scotty Scheffler's gonna he's win. Not, he's, he's yeah, like Scotty Scheffler's gonna 50. win, and then all Joel's parlays are gonna lose. So it's not even gonna matter. No, it's not. I got plenty more where they came from. There's one big silverback gorilla on that fucking golf course that's gonna take him down a peg or two, and that's my guy. Big bad Bryson DeChambeau is winning the green jack. He's going to put the jacket on. He's going to rip the thing. That's how fucking yoked he is, bro. I cannot wait for Bryson to win the Masters. You bet Scheffler too, didn't you? Yeah, however you have to, right? You don't want to have, you want to <laughs> not have That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have a little bit of Scheffler. So is, Bryson, with Scheffler. is Bryson the one that's like, like has new drivers that like weren't supposed to be like new or something I saw? They're, they got no? approved. He got him approved okay. by the PGA. Yeah, yeah. but, but they're, yeah, they're like good. new and they, they, they help out him not sucking. No, okay, Ryan, relax here, all right? Let's rephrase that, okay? Well, well, okay, paraphrasing what I read is that he's not great off the tee and these drivers help him off the tee. This guy's the longest driver in the fucking world. In the, in the accuracy, world. accuracy matters. Well, it doesn't, yeah, but doesn't that's matter how long it is as long as, as long as you put it in the right spot. That's his whole mindset is it doesn't matter what spot it's in. I'm going to be so fucking far. I'm going to be pitching from 125 yards anyways. I wasn't paying okay. attention. Is Ryan trying to teach us about golf? Yeah, he's trying. I, I'm just, I was asking trying, about Bryson's new drivers. That's what I was asking. Yes, he did have work in his club done, but it is perfectly legal and anybody else in the PGA can get it done as well. So I don't know why it's a big deal, but I'm just going to say that. Bryson's going to win the green jacket. Uh, He's also he looks normal now. He's he's not quite the silver back gorilla he was. Back he here. slimmed down a little bit, but he's still fucking yoked. Did you see oh, him? Yeah. He moved a land pole. He, there was a pole in the way of his shot today. He picked it up and walked <laughs> around with it over his shoulder. It's like get the picture of it. It's on Twitter. It's fucking hilarious. I'll oh, send it to you, Joel. It's funny all as right, fuck. Man. Um, all right, enough of that talk. Uh, as we got to the last game of the talk here, 10 30 p.m. time slot, we had the Minnesota Wild against the San Jose Sharks game at South in San Jose, Minnesota. The money line sitting at minus 245. Uh, Sharks on the money line at plus 200. Wild on the puck line, minus one and a half, sitting at plus 110. Over unders at six, over paying off, plus 100. The under minus 120. Uh, Ryan, you and your fucking Bryson DeChambeau hating ass can take this game away from me because I'm I, sick I, of talking. It was not hate. I I, I like it. I, <laughs> I, I like how it's that. But I was informed uh, by a source that this will be the Sharks fan appreciation game. And I believe that source will be in the crowd cheering on the Sharks. Probably the biggest Shark fan in the Shark Tank there. Uh, wild on a back-to-back -back here. I'm not quite sure what they're doing tonight. But I know it's Wallstead. Tomorrow night, um, they're down 2 nothing in Vegas right now. So love the Sharks here at plus 200. I think they get it done for their fans. They just won in Seattle. Screwed their fan appreciation night. They're going to come home. They're going to they're gonna reward their fans with a big victory here, potentially even in regulation. I know, I know that's a big fan, uh, big fan <laughs> of, of the of the fans going to be there. So, uh, yeah, giving the Sharks here plus 200. Uh, lean to the under, but just, just betting the Sharks. Yeah, I agree with that. The the Wild are, uh, you know, they're out of the playoff mix. They don't give a fuck. And when that happens, uh, sometimes the uh, the talent level gets evened out somewhat. And you know, we know the Sharks don't have a lot of talent, but they'll have a lot of heart for the for the 74 fans in the crowd. Um, so, yeah, Sharks here, $2. Uh, I don't mind that at all. 
Um, uh, I was going to say something else. So, yeah, just for Wall said he's 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 had a poor going in his uh, you know brief stint in the NHL so far. I'm sure he'll be better. He's one of the the you know the biggest name prospects. Like he was awesome for Team Sweden at the World Juniors a couple of years ago. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, he was reason why they, they they even went as far as it did. But anyway, yeah, Sharks here. Uh, I like them quite a bit. Also, uh, shout out to Goat Forty Five in the Discord. He, uh, you know, he probably bet like I don't know thirty units or something like that on the on the Sharks to be the the, the, the uh, worst record in the league when there was a misprice on a certain book. Um, and now the Sharks keep winning games and the Blackhawks keep losing. <laughs> so there's a chance that the Sharks could even uh, overtake them. So that, that's cahoots. something fun to root for as well. So yeah, give me the Sharks here plus two hundred or. Uh, oh, you know the plus one and a half, minus one three, but that's not nearly as fun. Let's just go Sharks victory. I want to cut of that, Colt. I want to cut. I, I, I couldn't get in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll fuck with the Sharks. You know, I know the other that was a last night's yeah. game. I know I said I was gonna bet Seattle, and I was looking. I just put a hundred bucks down on the Sharks, and they fucking came through swinging for me. So that was a a nice little tasty treat. Let's go. Let's go, Finns. They can do it. My boy. They got one of my favorite players of all time when Alexander Barabanov on that team, okay? And so fucking my boy Barabanov is going to go popping off. He's going to be doing some work. If my boy Cooley's back in net here, he's going to be absolutely so. lights out. Uh, well, the Wild are losing 3 right now to the Knights 10 minutes into the game, mm-hmm. too. So they might have given up already. They're pooched. They're mailed it in. You ever seen, you ever seen a shark live in the wild? No, because the wild can't handle the sharks, baby. The sharks, the sharks are doing them a favor by not living there. They're living in the sea because they're good guys, all right. Every shark I've ever met's always been pretty cool. So I'm going to take the sharks in this game, whatever they are, plus fucking two hundred here. Uh, over under in this game, I'm going to lean towards. I lean towards the under. Wild probably banged up here. Sharks probably fucking not giving a shit, doing anything anyways. So let's go. Boring game, but we're going to have fun here with this one. All right, fins up, then shark, Jimmy Buffett. Yeah. I want to do a, a quick dramatic reading of um, the, the quote from Devin Cooley on his mentality. I look up. I'm like, wow, a goal on 40 shots or whatever. I'm like, I feel good. It's just like, like nobody cares. You know, nothing's really going to matter. We're all going to die. Did he say We're that? Gonna die. <laughs> Did he say yeah. that? Yes. What? I, I, <laughs> when? Yeah. Last night Last after night? He, he had the 49 saves on 50 shots. Dude, this guy might be my favorite player in the league right now this is absolutely fantastic i'm in fuck, lo- devin fuck cooley. logan cooley we, we got devin cooley yeah <laughs> i'm all in bro any relation there no probably not probably We're like not. the same age probably well actually no Maybe. i think every goal is like 20 years old so. yeah you always say that. <laughs> yeah. oh he's young guy's like fucking 32 he's been drafted in like 2006 or something like that like no, um, yeah, I'll get I can get behind that all the time. Good for him. He's he's probably you know he's probably lurking in our Discord. He just doesn't want to admit it or something. Seems like a coolie kind of guy, you know. Uh, all right, consensus plays. What do we got here, boys? I'm tired. A whole of bunch. I think we have a whole 95. bunch. We got the the New York <laughs> game over Christ. five and a half minus one hundred five. Dallas regulation minus one hundred forty or puck line plus one ten. Uh, Avs minus one forty eight. You guys like it? It's a lean for me. Uh, Panthers minus two eighteen. Wait, 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 wait. We got to go back to uh, the, the the stars game. You said that that was a consensus play. I yeah, I, I, Ryan. yeah, I pointed out top of the show. It was not a consensus play. Apparently, Talon apparently said the Jets for for that one, but he didn't. He didn't. He didn't object when I said consensus play. It's I don't listen. Like you, it's much. almost like you guys don't listen when I talk. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Continuing along here. Yeah. Panthers, either money line or puck line under six minus 125. We're all on the Flyers minus 118. Down, Talon's not quite as bought in as us three, but he did us two, but he did say the Flyers. No, I didn't. No, he didn't. I said New sure, Jersey. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you said that. I hundred percent said New Jersey. What the fuck? This guy's just writing whatever he fucking wants down now. <laughs> Red Wings, Leafs over six and a half minus one thirty. <laughs> Penguins plus one fourteen. Ducks, Kings under six minus one twenty. And closing it out with the Sharks plus two hundred. Okay, the uh, the good old Calvin Pickard parlays in action, and it actually has a decent looking chance of maybe hitting tomorrow. Yeah, right. Good. Okay. Okay. 
that's the thing. Wait, are you going back on the Flyers now? No, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's get down to our lock dogs and totals here. Current standings, Julie's in first place with the record of 65, 64, and 3 of 1.69 units. Uh, myself, I fucked up. I got a record of 65, 67, uh, down 5.16 units. Rye guys got a record of 57, 73, and 2, down 18.277 units or some shit. Um, all right, Ryan, kick us off here, buddy. Why don't you uh, kick the tires and light the fires? Yeah, I'm liking my lock is not a consensus play, but it is the Flyers minus 118 against the Devils. Wayne Simmons night, I'll be in the building. They're, they're gonna, just going to win for me there. Uh, my dog, Sharks, plus 200 at home against the Wild. Fan appreciation night, they'll get it done. My total, Islanders, Rangers, over 5.5, minus 115. think that should be a, a high-scoring battle there in a rivalry game. For the record, uh, these guys fucking stole a lot of my picks. I let them go first. And uh, so these are my uh, my second wave of, of selections, as it were. But uh, typically those are the ones that do well. They, they, they uh, I don't know, it's good karma or something. Anyway, my lock, Avalanche money line, minus 148. The return of Rantanen after this missed a couple of games after a uh, hit against um, uh, Matias Eklund knocked him out. Thought it would be a bad concussion. Not so mad. He's going to get me back for this one, ready to go. Um, yeah, Jets will want this game, but Avalanche will want it more like the Avs win here at home. Uh, dog Panthers minus one and a half, plus 120 at home against the Sabres. I think they just keep rolling. Sabres, yeah, nice win against the Capitals, but uh, they're in golfing season. Panthers have bigger fish to fry. Um, total Bruins, Penguins under six, minus 115. Both teams want this game like blood that should contribute to a playoff atmosphere. I think both goalies are solid at least. Hopefully we get a better performance from, from the Dalkovich than the last one. Or if it's Jari, it could be Jari. Um, and then in which case, he's just as good. So Bruins, Penguins under six for my total. All right. Well, for the record, I would just like to say that Joel could have picked any of these teams when we went to go in and do our picks. I don't know what the fuck he was doing. It's I'm like, a gentleman. I'm in like, first place. I give you guys you're a, first. No, you're no, a gentleman, no. and then you complain about it. If you're a yeah. gentleman, you don't mention it. it it's <laughs> it's yeah. literally it's literally like I went into the grocery store, and I wanted a steak, so I bought a steak. And then Joel showed up like 10 minutes later and was like, oh, I kind of want a steak. Oh, No, Joel, steak. Joel was standing, the Joel yeah, was standing was, there in yeah. front of the thing. You yeah, like, okay, and, and he was steak. looking at it, and he was like, actually, yeah. I want that steak. And it's like, well, guess what? It's already in my hand, bro. So uh, I didn't steal anything. I can't steal what's actually already mine. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what to tell you here, bud. Um, other than that, I'll go with my lock. I got Dallas in regulation for Seattle, minus 140. That's like a nice uh, that's like a nice ribeye, you know, some nice marbling on it. Nice steak. <laughs> God, I like that. Uh, for my dog, Montreal money line versus Ottawa plus one thirty six. That's like, uh, ooh, what is that? That'll be like a nice ooh, filet mignon, a nice bacon wrap filet mignon with some, you know, Montreal steak spice on top. Give it a nice little pan sear about minute thirty seconds each side, and give it about maybe three minutes on each side in the oven at about four fifty degrees. Nice and rare. That's how I like it. Beautiful. Uh, and then for my total, uh, Buffalo, Florida under six minus one twenty five here. That's like a nice little, you know, that's like a nice little flank steak with like a nice homemade chimichurri on it. Maybe some oven roasted tomatoes. So you get a nice little bit of acidity going with the chimichurri as well. Uh, maybe like a nice little side of some like, I don't know, like some fucking Mexican rice or some shit like that. That sounds pretty damn good. So liking what I got here. Some nice steaks. Joel could have had every one of these steaks, but he was too busy looking at the tampon aisle. because he's a little. If you go fucking three, you know. <laughs> we're we're going to go six and you you're going to go on three. <laughs> Can you imagine? How's the uh, you, you're talking about steaks and whatnot? How's the Schweinshaxe? How I we made it tonight. Yeah, is that what you made tonight? That's all what right, I made cool. tonight. Yeah, no, yeah, you gotta follow was... follow town on Instagram, Joel. Mm -hmm. I know you're uh, all over the Instagram. Discord is my only social media. Mm. It's mm. not even oh, really social media. Much. It's just a bunch of fucking <laughs> us just <laughs> being dumb. Um, yeah, it was really good though. Sending a picture after this. Turned out really well, you know, braised and some, not braised, but just, you know, with like a nice beer, German beer gravy. And then I, so I went to the store, I was going to make like homemade potato dumplings and shit. And then I was like, well, they got some spatzel in here, but it wasn't even really spatzel. It was just like shitty pasta. Like I've had good spatzel before. It wasn't. So I, I'm kicking myself in the ass. I was going to make just actual like drop dumplings homemade, but I don't know. Masters was on. Didn't want to do a bunch of shit. So it was good though. Excellent. Yeah. Well, yeah. All right. Anything else plus you want to add? This is good schmecking. Say that's how you say bon appetit in German. Oh, pardon me. Das ist gut schmecken. Good eating. Good eating. Good eating. I'll give you a boot schmecken. All right. 
Uh, a gooch spanking? Is that what? <laughs> uh, all right, everybody. Sports Gaming Podcast. Website. That's the place to be. Tons of stuff going on in the world of sports, baby. Obviously, we got hockey. 13 games tomorrow. It's going to be absolutely electric. We got uh, – what else are we doing? What else we got? We got fucking the Masters. Round two, round three. It's going to be fucking sick. Bryson DeChambeau is going to win the Masters. Cannot wait to get to watch that guy tee it up every year for the rest of my life with this course. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, what else we got? We got baseball is doing its thing. Ryan, what's up in the world of baseball? You still – you still hard for baseball? I, I was never hard for baseball. Once, once the Flyers season is over, which could very well be in less than 24 hours, I will go into baseball. Okay. That is good to know. Uh, basketball. Basketball is a thing that's happening. They got playoffs mm-hmm. coming up. I haven't heard a word about basketball playoffs. Does anybody care? No. And Bean's back. And, 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 for a week. And back and for NBA Joel will be back, too. Oh, yeah. great. That's the wow. worst one. <laughs> that's <laughs> Oh, oh, hey, everybody. I'm just making a little surprise appearance here. Why don't you guys all go check out the SGPM website? Because that's the place to be on Bowie the Cat. We got tons of stuff going on in the world of sports. Uh, also, we got the Discord. So shout out to all of our friends and pals in the Discord. If you're not in the Discord, you're not making money. If you want to get in the Discord, you can reach out to Ryan or my owner, Talon, on Twitter. You can reach out to Talon and Ryan. Or you can reach out to HGP, a uh, social media account or social media assistant producer on Twitter. He'll be sure to help you out. He's an absolute beauty. Very nice guy. He'll tell you everything that you need to know. Uh, or what else you could do is uh, you can just go to your local shopper's drug mart. And when you're in your shopper's drug mart, you can go down to the, the aisle where they sell all the tampons and the period stuff. Because that's where that little bitch boy, Joel Meyer, will be looking. Instead of buying steaks, he's buying things that he can put in and around his vagina to keep it from bleeding. Because you know why? He's a little bitch. And when he's in that aisle, he would be like, hey, Joel, look at this steak I got. It's pretty nice, eh? But uh, also, can you tell me how to get in the Discord, please? And then he'll pull out his pink little cell phone, his pink little girly phone, and he'll be like, yeah, this is how you get into the Discord. You're a fucking arschlock, Bowie. <laughs> uh, I don't speak uh, I don't speak a European cunt, so uh, if you got something to say, why don't you say it to my fucking face so I can understand it, you little cocksucker. <laughs> All right, make sure you're subscribed <laughs> to the Hockey Run Podcast. If you're listening I'm to us on the podcast, you. subscribe to us uh, on YouTube. We're getting our subscribers up there. We appreciate that. Make sure you uh, subscribe and comment there uh, as Bowie uh, attacked Talon. Also, uh, make sure you're subscribed on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Leave us a five-star rating and review. Got a new five-star review here from Baluto O uh, on the on Wednesday, the 10th. Best Hockey Gambling Pod. Love the analysis these guys do on every game. Always insightful. One of the best things they do is recording the day before, which allows me to listen the night before the games Ah. instead of trying to squeeze in a time during the day of the games. The guys are probably the sum of the funniest sports podcasters, too. Great dynamic when all three are on. I guess he hates two-man shows. Just wish they'd be more consistent with doing pods when there's a full slate of games like last night instead of doing a pod for a three-game slate like tonight. Well, you know I what? Stayed up all night. Sometimes, sometimes we have scheduling issues, and Joel's a zombie, and you don't you don't want to hear that. We have a life, bro. Like we all work. Sometimes things happen. We can't just pod every night. We would love to if that was the case, but yeah. you know, well, we try to be as consistent as humanly possible. And for the record, these two kill it on their two man shows. I work midnight, so I can't. Every two weeks, I can't make it a lot. And they do a fucking awesome job. So hell yeah, love you. Yeah, I pr- appreciate the reviews though. Keep them coming. Five star reviews yeah. going into the playoffs. It helps the show grow. If you like what you hear. It's uh, you know going to the playoffs help uh, help help us grow here. Should we read the one we got on Twitter the other day? <laughs> oh, the, oh, he also subscribed to the podcast on YouTube, so I'll, I'll take that. Hell yeah! All right, he like followed how... me. He followed you. He followed the show. He subscribed on YouTube. We, <laughs> well, we fucking suck us. though. Yeah, I like how all the, the Rangers, buddy. Get. They're, they're the all Rangers. like uh, bad information, bad intel. It's like that. That's like the number one complaint for some reason. There's only one insider on this show, and he's only makes an appearance once a year. All right? We're just three, we're just three guys, all right. Like, yeah, you listening to this, you you are no, we are no more special than you. Okay, we got the same intel that you got. All right, so if we get it wrong every once in a while, we're sorry. You know, it's not like I'm calling up fucking I don't know, like who am I calling up? Fucking Kyle Dubas and ask him, you know, what his line combinations are going to be tomorrow versus the Bruins or some shit. Like, I don't. Know. What do you want me to do here, bro? <laughs> Uh, all right, let's wrap this up. I'm tired. Every go check out sports gaming. Oh, we already did all that shit. My name is Talon Jenkins. You can find me at Twitter, Talon underscore Jenkins ninety four. Shout out Bowie the Cat for making an appearance there. He does I love Joel. Lot. For everybody wondering, 
I am Ryan Gilbert. You can follow me on Twitter at rgilbertsop. You also find me sweating out the Suns bet to close out a uh, stepped-up parlay tonight. And I'm Joel Meyer. You can find me remembering to mention UFC 300 is tomorrow. 300 big ones, PPV. Um, this is a stacked card. I think this, this set a record for the most ranked fighters on one card. Like if you look at the fights, they're, they're massive. I mean, the headliners kind of mid considering everyone else in the card, but yeah, it's going to be massive. Masters right into UFC 300 today's or Saturday's going to be fucking awesome. Talon, he took this, he took the uh, the baton for Thursday, Friday. I'm taking it for Saturday and Sunday. See you to the end. Let's go golf and uh, fucking fights. Love that, Julie. Man of the people. I absolutely love it. Um, all right, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Peace. All right, one.